Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, the Bonsai Pot Tank. Well, we've got some news. Yeah, it's right over there. <laughs> Did any of you catch that? Got some explaining to do. Glad to have everybody here today. We've got some updating to do on the fish pot tank thing bonsai contraption that's over here above my left shoulder. Yeah, and, and, and it's on something new, so uh, we're going to tackle that first. As you've probably figured out by the intro, the last show was exciting and everybody was ready for the reveal, and we had a leak. Yeah, four or five tests in. About three hours later, after the last video was put to bed, published three hours later, when I checked on the little glass underneath the Bonsai pot tank, there was a little leak. Ugh. You know, such is life. With the last couple years we've had, that's the least of our worries, right? So we had to go back to the drawing board. So I believe the leak is somewhere where the crease from the plexiglass to the pond liner is I think that's where a little bit of the leak is happening so I've done another test since the last show and I only put it above this crease but not the back crease and only a few drips happened right here just a drip every few minutes just a drip so slow where is it coming from driving me insane so I have some more silicone we have clear this time, because I don't want any more black silicone to be shown here. So I've got some clear stuff, and we're going to smooth that on on the, on the um, parts where it connects from the plexiglass to the tank, to the pot, I should say, on both the front and the back. A thin layer, really make sure it's secure on all the surfaces, and we're going to hope for the very, very best. So that's, that's the least I can do. With the break from the Bonsai Pot Tank, I thought I would make the stand for the tank, so that what was next. So I didn't have to worry about any leaks or any rock decoration or tree plantings. Let's make a stand for this. Therefore, I began the construction in the plant room of the stand that's going to hold the bonsai pot tank, which, if you recall, is going to be well over 75 pounds. So this had to be beefy. So part of the reason I'm making this thick stand with 2x4s making it super thick and strong is because what I was going to put it on was one a little too high and a little too rickety. So the new pot stand is really reinforced with some great 2x4, super strong, but with it being too uh, high, I decided to make a real thick chunky base. So then at the end of the stand construction, I went ahead and got a one, or excuse me, a 2x10 and so I've got that 2x10 with a 2x4 inner frame where the stand can sit inside. So it gives it a real nice chunky bottom. I got the top with the 1x4s where the bonsai pot sits up on top. So it's going to work out pretty good, I think. So let's take a peek at the stand in its semi-finished state. So here we go. I first constructed the stand where I was going to put 1x4s as a nice uh, top, clean, smooth, we'll stain all this real nice, make it waterproof of course, um, and um, really strong. So this is 2x4s uh, here, back in the inside here, we got a nice strong floor in here, we'll put a shelf at the bottom here, and then the 2x10 the all the way around is going to hold the structure in. There's a 2x4 drilled in about 2 inches down, 6 inches from the bottom. So we have 2 inches where this thing snugs in and it fits really super tight. I actually had to loosen up the screws on the outside here, force this uh, guy in there, and then tighten the screws again. So this is not moving anywhere. Really super strong. I just got one uh, quarter inch plywood on the sides and the back. Nothing in the front because we're going to make a door. So we have our trim here. We'll put this trim here. And there'll be some trim here, and there'll be some trim here to give it kind of a little bit of a decorative edging. So you won't see this, of course, it'll be decorative. And this will be the lip right here. I'll get some straight wood, <laughs> make it work, and then we're going to put this. And I, I probably will put this on hinges so I could put a cover on here and we can open it up. And the reason why we want to have it open, of course, is because if you recall, back in the corner here, 
there's going to be um, that area where we can slide the bubbler and the, um, the, the, all the cords for the power, which will come and go right behind here. You won't even be able to see the cords. And I also have to make a shelf up high here. Um, um, or if it's down low, it might work, but I'll put a shelf up high here where I'm gonna be able to put little cups or some uh, plastic bins underneath where the drip holes are. So the drip holes are right about in here, here and here, here, here and here, and it doesn't touch any of the two by fours in the front, but the back two by four might get a little wet. So I'll have to put a little bit of flex seal on there or stain it, put some kind of protection so this wood doesn't get bad over time. Now it's a two by four, so it would take an awful long time, but we don't want any um, mildew to build up and just keep it wet, right? So now I'm gonna go ahead and be a he-man right here, and we're gonna take this off, and we're gonna put this over here, and I'm gonna show you the top real quick. So let's go ahead and lift this up. Definitely 60 to 70 pounds. That is strong. So as you can see, we have the one by fours here going around as a square, and the bulk of the weight is right where the two by fours come up to make the frame of this bonsai stand. And then unlike most stands that you would have, it's not solid all the way through because we need the water to go through to the bottom, right? So the bonsai pot is gonna have water that goes down right here, right here, and right here, and the water goes down right here, right here, and right here. So this two by four might get a little wet. This two by four might get a little bit wet. So what we'll do is we'll put tape on here all the way around the outside. We'll put tape, and we're gonna just go ahead and spray flex seal around here, around here, around here, and around here, just in case any water starts to leak, it'll be a little bit more protected. And we won't see any of this, so the flex seal is just as fine. Um, I could stain it, of course, as well. So it's an open face top so the water can get down. Now we can also, underneath the bottom, we can go ahead and we can, uh, we'll cut a hole in the back there for the cords, and the cords will come all the way down from that hole in the pot, and we'll have a little shelf there for some of our uh, equipment to think uh, to sit on. Um, with the cords going up, the, the uh, filter, the heater, all those things can be plugged in behind the um, shelf system in here. So we just need a little bottom shelf down in here. We'll get a shelf somewhere up about here, and uh, we'll be ready to go, and a, and a door for the front. I know a lot of you were concerned that I wasn't gonna be able to lift this with water, and you're probably right. So now we're gonna be able to put this here when it's all done, and we're not gonna to have to move it anymore once it's done. And I may not get any finish stain on this guy until the springtime. So if we get this set up with trees and water, we'll leave it as is untouched, and then we'll eventually uh, get this thing painted. I might go black. All my fish tanks are black except for the uh, uh, fish tank with uh, the ficus forest that I've had on top. That was kind of a brown. But I like I like a lot of the black, and plus with this being a dark slate gray in here, this black I think will keep uh, it all semi-neutral, similar color, and then the trees will pop up here with the fish tank with a little light in there. It'll just highlight this. Um, if I go too light, I think it'll be too bright. So we'll go black on this, maybe just paint this one, and then we'll uh, have this uh, beautiful. So let's let's zoom in on this and show you what I was working on. So everything's looking pretty similar to where I left you last, except for I have these rocks. I did order some more small rocks. And I just started messing around with a couple of ideas of where the rocks will go. These are just sitting in here. But I got the bonsai soil still in there. This is all drained, drying off, so I can put some seal in here later tonight. But right here is I have my potential crick that's coming from somewhere back here on the mountainside. It's kind of, you know, it's a little spring way up high. But, so if I have to take this one off, I've got this flat piece of uh, rock here that goes down and the water will trickle right in here. But whenever you have water, of course, it's going to go to the path of least resistance. So I'm going to have to seal these in and put sealant in there so it holds all the water and directs it between here. And then this will kind of cover where it's coming from. It'll sit right in here. And I do have pond liner right here with these rocks, giving it some texture and height. And again, we'll put sealant all around there that you won't be able to see. That'll block the water, and it'll make the water kind of rise up in here, and it'll start to trickle down here, and it'll be forced to come here 
with all the sealant blocking its path all the way down, and then the water will kind of trickle right here. And then a viewer had a very good idea. I'll probably put the bubbler right below here, and so the bubbles kind of curl up here and look like the water is creating some disturbance right there, and that'll have some water. That'll be a neat little element, so I'll try that. And of course, I'll have some trees in here. I've got several trees in one of my fish tanks that are trying to get all waterlogged, and we'll try a couple trees that are inside the, um, the little creek here, or the river, I should say, or lake. I might have it uh, one falling down from uh, the edge and, and we'll see. So this side is almost what it could look like in the end with rocks hugged up against the pond liner so you don't see it. Some bonsai soil here that'll come up a little higher then we'll get at least one big tree here, maybe two, maybe three, two little ones and a big one. And then we have a little spot back here where I can fit at least one tree back here. Um, so we'll get at least one tree back here and a couple here So we have three here and then we're probably just gonna put three or four Maybe five little ones up here and see what happens. This one's skinnier I probably should have made this a little bigger in retrospect like this one We're having that perspective of getting bigger too and we could follow this as it goes back, right? Um, but oh well for another uh, project a year or two down the road so this one right here, you know, that's close to what could be a final design for this water to trickle right here and have our river go into our water. What I really like at that last test that I showed you when I had my camera at a certain angle, you couldn't even see this glass. So with this rock hugging up right here, some bonsai soil and eventually some sphagnum moss and some rocks over here, you hardly will be able to even see the lip from certain angles, which is kind of fun. And then I will put a light somewhere down in here. If I get a small enough light and a big enough piece of rock that overhangs, I can attach a light, a real small light underneath some of these new uh, LED lights. I could put one in the corner. Um, we'll see. So the reason I put the uh, pot over here is one, it didn't fit on this stand over here, which is a little rickety, I felt. And it's also too close to the north facing window. Now, though it's a north facing window, fish tanks, if they are too close to windows, can get a lot of algae buildup. And so I don't want this to, to get too algae. Now, of course I say that, and then I'm gonna have bonsai trees here with lights on for at least 12 hours a day. So I'm gonna have to be very careful with my algae and the, and the, and the, the light that's gonna keep the bonsais healthy. So I might have to do a lot of scraping on this glass of algae that creates. Um, I am gonna have an algae eater in there to eat some of that algae for me, maybe a couple of them, so it keeps it super clean. But I'm gonna have to probably work on that more regularly than my fish tanks because lights are gonna be trying to get these trees going all the time, which means light's gonna be going in here. So I don't need the additional light from the outside getting in here because it'll just make it worse. However, when you're talking bonsai and some of the trees I have, they like a lot of light, they want the light, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in kind of a tough spot there. So the combo fish tank tree thing here will provide a few challenges, and I'm aware of those, but we're just gonna have to see how it goes. So we'll get more bonsai soil in here and some trees. We're gonna secure all of this. We're gonna make some designs over here with some trees, but we can't do any of that until we make sure this leak is not gonna continue. So next is gonna be some sealant. I'll do that off camera, and the next update, we'll hopefully be putting water back in here and start to churn it up with the filter, the air bubbler, heater, and getting some trees into this bonsai pot tank. The tree I'm gonna work on today is one of my Molinas, also known as a parrot beak. And this is one of the trees from the two tropicals we used at the Minnesota Bonsai Society workshops in July and then also in September. And I have some extra ones in the room that I'm trying to you know, keep taken care of. Um, we had some critter problems with some of the premnas that we have uh, kind of recovering here in the plant room as well. And I did have a couple of uh, melinas left over as well. And so taking care of these and making sure that they continue to grow. And this one in the plant room has exploded. So I made a big chop right there to uh, see if I could get some uh, more uh, different, smaller leader and some ramifications. So bigger bottom, thinner top. And as you can see, the, the uh, branch that's right next to that chop completely took off over uh, 12 inches, 12 to 18 inches there. This one's taken off from the backside, also a foot in length, and it's changing direction. The leaves are kind of falling off on this one. This one's doing fine. We're just gonna give this a little trim here today. But before we do that, let's introduce to you more 
footage and more conversation with Nigel Saunders of the Bonsai Zone. So again, I have introduced a new podcast over on my website, which is bonsaiacres.com, and the podcast is called Up North Bonsai. And my premiere episode is with Nigel Saunders. And so let's go and check in with Nigel again. Some of the uh, conversation we had, a little sneak peek into the podcast for you. And this was some extra footage that didn't get into the podcast, so I thought I'd share it for you. And this first section is uh, really how Nigel got started. If you don't know the story, we talk a little bit about how he got into bonsai. And then after that, I love his comment about bonsai and pets. And uh, what about that? So let's go take a sneak peek at some of the footage that didn't make it into the podcast, but we'll put it here in Dave's bonsai, and then we'll be back to work on this tree. How did this all begin for you? How did bonsai get into your world? How did you become so Nigel Saunders in bonsai zone? I Bonsai found me. I didn't go out looking for it. Uh, the story is we were given poinsettias as, as a Christmas decoration at work. Everyone put them in their little cubicles and I had a window in my cubicle. So I put it in my windowsill and it grew really well out of the bottom of the pot. This little plant started growing and I didn't know if it was a weed or what it was. And I thought, well, I'll let it grow and see what it is. And so it started going a little taller and then it started getting a woody trunk on it. And I thought it kind of looks like a little tree. And, uh, <laughs> I thought, I kind of like it. So I, I thought I better put it in its own pot. And it started growing more and more. And it started getting kind of tall for the window. I thought, if I've got to prune it or it's just going to be yeah. too much. And so I went to the uh, bookstore and I, I was looking in the gardening section at uh, in the tree section for pruning trees and shrubs. And I saw a book on bonsai and I didn't know anything about bonsai. So I opened up this book and it was like, uh, it was all on species. They had like, uh, I think 250 different species of bonsai listed. I was flipping through it and it, my eyes just lit up. It was like, wow, people actually, it's a hobby to actually prune trees and keep them small. I never knew that. So yeah. it, it just blew me away. And, uh, and so I thought, well, I'll, uh, I bought the book I still have it. And, uh, it tells you how to prune it. So I went to work and I got out the scissors and I pruned the tree and it looked like a little tree and I was very happy with it. And then, you know, eventually I had to repot it and I started root work. And um, so after that day, I, I just looked up every resource I could find, which was just the library at that time. Every bonsai book I could read, I read uh, every magazine I could find. I joined three clubs uh, in the first month that I got into bonsai and KW Bonsai is one of them. That's the only one of the three that's still around now. <laughs> and they had a club library. So I would sign out all the magazines, Bonsai Today and Bonsai mm -hmm. Focus, and I would read everything I could on them. Back in those days, looking through those magazines, you see these fantastic old Japanese trees. And it was kind of heartbreaking when I have my little sticks it was, it, it was, uh, all their techniques were for refining trees and right. uh, air layering and techniques that when I have little seedlings and sticks and pots, they, they basically had no, yeah, the, the magazines were inspiring in one way, but they're also made you feel small, I guess. I think it could, it, it's like going into the club for the first time and you're just overwhelmed and all these people start throwing away terms and, and yeah. they go all this experience and you open one of these books and it's, yeah, it's for the refined tree and people who have been in it for years. Um, yeah. It, I think you could just feel really overwhelmed. I like your term small. You kind of feel like, Ooh, my interest in the hobby has grown as my trees have grown. At first, it's hard to get excited about, about a bunch of seedlings and pre bonsai and that nothing was really developed into a tree form. Like I wouldn't invite someone over and show them my collection because they'd laugh. Yeah. They go, yeah, they have a bunch of sticks and pots. Yeah, that's right. that's real nice. That's your hobby. Yeah, that's right. And uh, <laughs> so I think as my trees developed, I think my interest in the hobby grew also. Do you still have that seedling or is it long gone? You know, I still have it. That's that's my uh, my big ficus that's in the 3D printed pot. That uh, That's that tree. That's that tree. That was my oh. very first bonsai. Oh. 
bonsai is, um, I, I tell people it's like owning a dog or a cat. Uh, you don't just leave your cat at home and go away for two days without feeding it or giving right. it water. Uh, and bonsai is very similar. It, it yeah. takes, you have to look at it each day. You have to, it's a commitment. Uh, it's not a hobby that, you know, it's not like model making where you can do a bit of the model and then you can walk away for a couple of days and come back and work on it some more. It's every day uh, as a schedule. So I tell people, you know, the first part of bonsai, you're training yourself to take care of the tree. And then the second part of bonsai is you're training the tree into a tree form, like yeah, a bonsai. Yeah. So, yeah, you've got to train yourself first, be disciplined on schedule to do things consistently and if you don't do th things consistently you never learn because you know if you water at a different time every day well that changes your whole dynamic of what the tree does in the day and so you have to be pretty consistent to be successful i think I truly had such a great time talking with Nigel. I can't wait for the next conversation. And if I'm ever up that way, over and up, not too much up, he's actually at a latitude that's uh, about the same where we are in Minnesota. Um, but crazier weather still where he's at. I hope to go see his new greenhouse and talk a lot about the greenhouse. If there's one thing I'm looking to possibly do for a summer project this year is to make a greenhouse. Probably can't be as big as Nigel's, but something bigger than my cabin cold frame, one that I can stand up in and uh, make a cold frame slash greenhouse combo. Can I do that? That'll be a summer project. In the meantime, we have this Molina to tackle. So now this Molina is pretty much a bean pole. It's a telephone pole. It does have a little movement here. Kind of comes up to the right, your left. A little bit of movement over there. Then it comes back this way. Then it has a little bit of movement that way. And then it's just kind of big and thick up here, which is why I chopped it right here. There's also another big chop right here. So I chopped these two uh, when I brought it back in from the outside here, getting ready for winter in the plant room. Now what's nice about this big big old tree uh, limb right here. It's a good sacrificial branch. It is thickening everything below it, but I don't want this to get too bulgy. And look at right here. This one's growing straight up from that spot. So we have this little wiggly curly there. So why don't we go ahead and we get rid of that right now. We're just gonna cut that all the way back to that new growth. We'll leave a little bit of wood for some dieback. And we just cut this whole thing off. Now, because this pl plant is a relatively new to me now, just this last year with the Minnesota Bonsai Club, I'm gonna go ahead and put this into some uh, leftover bonsai soil, some recycled soil, and uh, see if we can go ahead and get some uh, a cutting out of this one, right? I could even cut it twice because the wood is getting a little bit harder up here, but we'll cut it back, we'll get at least one cutting out of that. So that cut that one down to size. Now how about this big one right here? Well, there are, there are a couple of leaves on either side of this now, so it's starting to ramify down here. So this did its job, so we're going to go ahead and cut this one down to here for sure. And that one I think is too small for cutting. The Molinas have not been as successful as cuttings as the Premnas for me so far, so based on my experience in my plant room, they're not taking off as much. So with that cut alone, I could leave this tree alone. Um, there's really not a whole lot of work to this, but I wanted to throw at least a tree into this episode of Dave's Bones Eye because we have to take a little break with this. And the build we did in hyper speed mode, and this just needs to little it just needs to set. The leak tells me to slow down a little bit. It's looking pretty cool though, even though we don't have any fish tank in there or trees. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm still super excited. So we need to work on a tree and we're gonna clean this up just a little bit more. So this branch right here has a super nice branch growing right here now. So some new growth. This one took off, but it's losing some leaves. I'm just gonna cut it off right there for this backward facing leaf. That's all I'm gonna do. This one I'm just gonna trim right to there. We've got this one now coming back towards you, but I have no idea where this tree might have a front someday. Maybe it's that right there. So this is going to the back because we wouldn't want this to be the front because this is kind of staring at us in the in the face. So this is kind of a front. Would we ever tilt it a little bit more? I, I'm just not sure what this one's going to do. We might get slucky and get some back budding back here if we keep cutting this thing back. But for right now, we'll just take this one in the back and we'll just nip it shorter. See if I can continue to get some. This is really a thick branch in here, so we have a whole bunch of things happening right down in here, back here. There's even some little stuff here at the base. 
and that's probably just going to create some bulging there so I'm just going to snip those out right there right there and there too close to the trunk right there so we get those leaves out of there and we'll see what those inner ones do right there there's a couple more growing in there so yeah we have some growth on here which is super nice there's a there's a junction right here that has uh let me take off my glasses here and see. Yeah, there's kind of one, two, three branches all in there, but there's some new growth in there. I don't want to mess with that. There's a lot of new growth in there. We're just going to let that keep shooting out in the plant room. I think I will cut this back one more here, cut off this really big leaf and this really big leaf. There we go. This also has a big leaf going in. Let's just cut it out. Here's a leaf going down, a branch that's kind of weird going down. We'll get that out of there. So this branch right here has the old cut spot plus two now. So it did split into two here, so that's nice. If I just cut this little uh, stub off a little bit shorter, cut this great big leaf off right here, and let that new growth do what it's gonna do. A couple of big leaves there. Yeah, I don't really need to do too much to this tree because it's grown in the plant room and we want to continue its growth. So I'm just going to trim these down just a little bit. This is a really interesting, this is new growth in the plant room right here, but it's parallel with the branch where it was cut. So I think I'm going to cut it back completely right here. And we want a new branch that's going to fan outward more this direction instead of cutting back in there. And that's all I'm going to do. I did not have big plans for this tree other than to bring it back down a little comp compact. This is kind of my lollipop tree. The way it's growing right now is lollipops. We'll see if other things try to grow down lower on this tree. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens this uh, spring and summer when we get it out into that full sun. Who knows where this will explode. I do see another super big leaf right here. Look at this guy right here. We don't need that right there. And there's a couple other little leaves here I could thin out here as I do spin this thing around. Again, that's just going to let more light in, more possible back budding. This one's really close to the inside of the tree. We'll get rid of that one. Another super big leaf. All right. Now I'm going to put the scissors down. So there we have just a little Molina, the parrot beak. And we're gonna see what's gonna happen with this one. I see another really big leaf going inwards. We're taking that big leaf off. Excellent. Fun to work on a tree in the middle of winter as always. We'll put this back on the bench and we'll be good to go. Hey, that does it for another episode of Dave Bonsai. Remember to check out the podcast on bonsaiacres.com and my discussion with Nigel. Uh, fun podcast, the first one, uh, the premiere series. And um, we're going to have more video footage from Nigel and my conversation on coming episodes here in the near future. So uh, stay tuned and we'll have more stuff for you. So it's middle of January. I hope your trees are doing well. So take care of you and take care care of those trees and we'll catch you very soon on the next one.